I was uh, literally shaking last night. How about you? <laughs> I didn't mean to watch it. Uh, I had no intention to watch the, the speech. I happened to come to my computer because uh, I've cut the cord and turned on Fox, uh, foxnews.com, went mm-hmm. there, and I was like, oh, well, I'll watch. I'll give it a shot. Popped on Twitter just because I wanted to be able to see live reaction. And that's, that's really cool because it's basically like you're watching – a speech which some of your best friends <laughs> yeah. when you're on Twitter. Yeah, it is. You get to, it, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun and the instantaneous reaction from anyone in the world, really. So well, I'm sitting here. let me, I'll just jump in real quick. I mean, one could say that what has happened is very, uh, in terms of social media, is very unhealthy because we're we should be having communal interactions with people who 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 face to face and we live near and so on. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I was joking with a, a, a friend of mine the other day. I was like, I don't think at this point I have any non-shitlord friends. <laughs> and you could say that that's sad. <laughs> like, I'm, a, I'm this rec- recluse who, you know, lives in, uh, you know, is up in my <laughs> attic on Twitter and so on. But it's not exactly like that. Like, it, you know, it's, it's the good and a bad. I mean, you could say this is a very bad development. We're not connected with our communities. Or you could say this is an amazing development that, you know, we're meeting all these people whom we never would have met and we're building friendships that uh, wouldn't have happened uh, or 20 years ago. you're just watching people build unbelievable brands yeah. Uh, yeah. out of thin air. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing of what's, of what's happening. But no, you're asking where, you know, uh, so I started watching and it dawned on me after he started to list off these, these, these tenants, these planks. It's like, this guy is giving a speech that is, he's basically asserting, um, he's basically, okay, let's go to Red Dawn. Uh, remember that great scene <laughs> and John Milius is Red Dawn where what's the difference between them and us? Yeah. Huh? He goes, because we live here. Right. And that to me has always been kind of a motto of how I view life. It's like, okay, you know, Hey, I like what Trump said about Mexico, Mexico. They have a right for self-determination in Mexico. Not in America. They don't have the right to determine our trajectory as a nation. Right. It, Which, that was the setup. This yeah. is the thing. The, the, it, was this, it was actually brilliant. And I, I go back and forth between thinking Trump is like just flying by the seat of his pants and he doesn't know what he's doing, but it all seems brilliant, like, you know, at the uh, uh, post facto kind of thing. Uh, but, and then I often sometimes think, oh, this man is actually a total genius in terms of <laughs> PR and influence. And all that. I, I kind of go back and forth, to be honest. But I would say that yesterday, September for, or August 31st, which, what, what is today? Today's <laughs> September 1st. Right, August 31st, 2016, uh, of the current year. That was a day of brilliance. Because he, it was a setup. Like the morning session where he was in Mexico was very diplomatic, very serious. Not, I wouldn't say high energy, to be honest. Like it, it was kind of boring. Um, but, you know, it, diplomatic press conferences are boring. I don't know if there's ever <laughs> been one that's been really interesting in our lifetime. It's a, you know, it's very well crafted, uh, very safe talk and so on. But he did set it up because he said like, I, you know, I, res- I, I love Mexico. They're amazing people. They're wonderful. You know, all that kind of stuff. But he was like, they have a right to love themselves and we have a right to love the- ourselves. And so that was a kind of little, little seed of nationalism that he planted. And then the, in the evening, it was just like unbelievable. That, that, was, that speech was so much better than I would have imagined. Um, and the other thing about it is that he was really hearkening back to 1924, because and in the 1924 Immigration Act, there are actually Correct. a couple of acts that, that came yeah. that were there, because basically those acts, which were influenced by people like Madison Grant and so on, I mean Madison Grant Stoddard, was almost yeah. like, yeah, yeah, those guys were acting almost like uh, Eminence Grise. They were behind the scenes, you know, uh, you know, certainly influencing people in, through through their ideology and their 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 concepts of history and so on. Uh, but basically, th- that was an act based on we want to keep America the same. Therefore, all new immigration is going to reflect the ethnic and racial constitution of the current nation. And OK, yes, Trump did not <laughs> say that. He did not quote from the conquest of the continent or something. 
Uh, but that would have been a little the too... path to the great race. <laughs> right. <laughs> if he would have done that, then I might have had a heart attack. I think maybe he spared me by not. Cool. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I, I, but uh, so he but he was gesturing towards that. Like it, it wasn't this we're a universal nation or it wasn't a like we've got to be fair to the world. You know, there are people in, you know, Indonesia who want to be here. How could we say no to those guys? You know, it wasn't that nonsense. It was it was basically we're going to have immigration that reflects our nation. And it, it wasn't I mean, it was a little soft around the edges, but just the fact that he put forth that idea was huge. I mean, it, it, it was, a, it, it's like he's changing the way people think. He's like reorienting their, their minds. And that is really, I don't think we can underestimate the significance of that. Uh, there's not much else to say what, uh, there's not much else to, you know, to analyze the speech than what you just said, we are witnessing a historic paradigm shift in the world yes. and our, and our, and our brethren, our, our, our cousins in Europe. I, uh, I, I hope they're listening carefully and they, they look at what Merkel and they work. They look at what, uh, at what, uh, I can't even think what the French president's name is, right? Who cares? Hulant. It doesn't really matter. Um, Holland or whatever Hulant, his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Hulant, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's August 31st is, a date, uh, 2016 is a date that our great grandkids will look at <laughs> if we, if we, if we do s- turn things around yeah. and, and it, it doesn't mean that Trump is the great, you know, the great leader who's going to, you know, uh, lead us charging into, you know, the hordes of Mordor or something like that. No, no, no. He's opening the gate for that eventual person, persons. And so is Hillary Clinton. Oh, Hillary Clinton is uh, <laughs> no, Hillary. Yeah, Hillary Clinton. I, uh, she did this <laughs> while I was on my Japanese vacation, so I, I really I didn't get to do a podcast on it. But I, I'm going to be doing some more podcasts in the next coming days. I'm just recovering. I arrived back uh, uh, late uh, last night, uh, late the night before um, uh, Tuesday night. Um, I'm still kind of jet lagged and kind of out of it, to be honest. But um, I'm going to do some. I'm going to do some more talking about this subject. But yeah, it, you know, Trump changed people's minds. And Hillary did as well, because Hillary, what was remarkable about Hillary's speech was that she, she was, she did outreach to John McCain, George W. Bush, Mitt Romney supporters. She was basically saying, we're all one. You know, we, we might, we might disagree on policy, but you know, in, in terms of the big picture, we're all together on this. And the alt-right is the moniker of resistance. The alt-right is the black flag. It's and funny you say it's funny you say that way because I thought James Kirkpatrick wrote a really good piece for uh, V there, where he used the word collaborators, and I think that's such a perfect word to describe the outreach uh, that that she did to yeah. the neocons, to the standard bearers of the Republican Party, who have been the architects and the faces of just such disastrous policies. Yeah. Uh, you they're know, not they're even Iraq collaborators; they're, they're just colleagues. You know, they're they're yeah, just exactly. they're equals. It, you know. It's like it's like from Carol Quigley's book Tragedy and Hope, yeah. where he talks about being able to sit in on all these meetings, and he said, "Well, I just wish we would be open about what we're doing." Well, <laughs> Hillary was just open. Hillary was just incredibly transparent yeah. about the partnership that exists in the Beltway within this. Uh, we think it's we think it's actually a game, but it's it's even worse than professional wrestling. It's it's just shadow boxing yeah. um, at this point. It, it's and 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 you know we. Uh, we understand, and I think to to some extent, the Bernie Sanders supporters who are just non-existent now. I have no idea what happened to them. Uh, they should be ashamed of themselves. Perhaps they're hiding in his uh, vacation home or something. Um, <laughs> I agree. They got it. They were getting it. They did a get little, it they uh, did in their get own it. way. You know, they're leftist, whatever, but they kind of got it as well. They did get it, and yeah. uh, it's just it, it's just a shame because Hillary Hillary just gave a speech that, like, you're right. I mean, she basically just show she basically just put all the all the cards on the table, and it's like, wow, okay. So it is just a uh, incestuous uh, um, orgy that uh, you know Matt Drudge couldn't even comprehend if he was trying to uh, do the Bernie Man orgy that he keeps linking to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you see that story, he keeps linking. Into it. Anyways, um, what what is that? The Burning Man? Oh, there's some there's some tent at Burning Man that he must be uh, 
fixated upon because he keeps he keeps linking all these strange stories of sexual depravity at Burning Man. Oh, well, it, it's, it's funny because you know that's he's not exactly always, news, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> point of this. Point is this. And hey, that's a great little segue though. Matt Drudge deserves a hand in all of this. You know, he might not be an official shitlord, and uh, you know there are some things about Matt that I think we all have problems with. But he has been such a huge proponent of breaking the ceiling, so to speak, in terms of he's now, you know, he's now actually using terms like, you know, white people beaten as opposed to just be like, oh, it's a knockout game. Yeah, and he's increasing I agree. racial. Do he's you know getting what? racial. I this is how I would describe it is that um I I actually I, I might uh, you know, quibble with uh Kirkpatrick on collaborators. I, I I think that's almost like assuming that these Democrats are in control. I, I would say they're colleagues. But I would say this. I think people like Drudge and Ann Coulter are, are, and, and, and Milo and others are fellow travelers and with us, with the alt-right. And, 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 of course, we have our disagreements. Like, you know, Ann Coulter, she comes from mainstream conservatism. She's like a hard – she was a hardcore version of mainstream conservatism. And that's why I would always – uh, I couldn't stand her until recently. Um, and she did write a book that could have been titled Dem- Democrats of the Real Racist. It's called Mugged <laughs> from 2012. They, they, you know, I'm not. It is. It is. It that's is. That's what it is. Uh, however, all, all I, look, I, I'm, I'm nothing if not a scientist. Like, I, I'm willing to change my opinion when facts change. And so, you know, I like Anne now. I think she is a, I think she is a fellow traveler of the alt-right. And, and I don't, in a way, want her to be alt-right. I, I, don't, I don't want her to start sounding exactly like Richard Spencer because that, that doesn't, she's less powerful that way. You know, we already have me. We already have Jared. We, we have Kevin McDonald. Like, we, I think it's, it's good that we have Anne. And uh, she's, and she's pushing, you know, she's, uh, channeling energy in our direction and people like stuff on Molly I mean, I, I actually have been a fan of, of Molly for a while. Uh, not that I agreed with him. I'm not an anarchist, but I always found him very compelling and charismatic and, and, um, you know, he, whenever you listen to a, a step on Molly uh, uh, talk, you know, you know, it's going to be interesting. And, and he's kind of bringing people <laughs> towards out, you know, he's channeling the energy towards, towards the alt right. Uh, so I, I think this is great. And I, and I think it's, you know, the com- communism had fellow travelers and they weren't communist. They were people who sympathize. They, they agreed with say 80% or maybe, maybe just 50%, but 51%, but that was enough. And th- they were important people, maybe more important than like hardcore Marxist intellectuals. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's a great thing. I, I, I think we should be applauding fellow travelers and we should always also criticize them. Like if exactly. Anne, if Anne goes and does more dim, you know, what I, TRS, it's like, what is it? D R cubed or, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 right. are real, yeah, DR, if she goes D R cubed, I'll definitely like hit back at her, but uh, but that, well, that's, if Anne if Anne tweets she's that she's going to go see a matinee showing of Hillary's America and encourages other people to go see it, well, then we know, hey, Anne, come on, give yeah, us a break, right? right Seriously, exactly. come on. Uh, you know, Dinesh, uh, what he was, he's a plagiarizer who uh, had to uh, have what into racism first print run scrap because he lied about Sam Francis and uh, Jared Taylor. It and, wasn't uh, that he was he plagiarized. He was plagiarizing parts of. This is the great irony of that scandal. He uh, Jared Taylor. And I believe Jared might have written this under the name Samuel Taylor because there, there's he he's used I I don't know the whole story behind that I've never asked him about it but uh, he wrote a book called um, uh, what was it called it was it was in the, from the nineties um, paved with good intentions paved with good intentions and I actually read that about it's you know, great. ten it's years a great ago book. but it's it's definitely real on race but it's not. It's not from the perspective of a nationalist. It, it's it's almost like a Heather Heather McDonald style book, you know. It, Which is it's, fine. It again, is what it is. Yeah, it is what it, it is. is. What it is. Right. And uh, Dinesh was uh, using he was he was effectively plagiarizing that book while he was criticizing uh, the American Renaissance Conference and 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 bashing Sam Francis and, and effectively getting Sam Francis fired as well. Um, pre-internet days or early internet days in the mid nineties, that was that you had to, excuse me, you had to write articles like that. You know, Sam Francis would be cackling about what's going on right now. Uh, because 
you know, he'd have, he would have gotten his book out on the, uh, you know, synthesizing race and, and history and, and politics. But, you know, going back real quick to what you're talking about, the fellow travelers, you know, I guess I can say this. I've met uh, a lot of these people. I know mm-hmm. a lot of these people. And um, before he had, uh, before he had uh, his, you know, unfortunately, one of his main outlets severed, uh, Milo, I'm talking about Twitter. Uh, had yeah. an opportunity to meet him, and I told him, I said, "Look, dude, you're really important, but the guy that I think is the most important thinker out there, who's doing a lot of good good things, because he's basically forced an entire organization to shift gears in its coverage of politics and and um, and uh, world events. That's Paul Joseph Watson at Infowars." And I mean, the stuff we can laugh and think, "Oh, come on, that's ridiculous," but it, it's it's amazing how. Um, active this guy is and the output yeah. that he has on what's happening in Europe to Europeans by this Muslim migration. He just posted this horrifying image on, on Facebook of a uh, fountain, a beautiful fountain in Paris in 2013. Then there's an image of it in 2016 and yeah. it's completely graffitied. Uh, and it looks like you're in, um, you know, I've been uh, there. Johannesburg yeah. and it's just, it's a frightening image and it's that kind of, it's that kind of meme. It's that kind of, Pushing the same subject over and over again, this this cultural enrichment. I love you know we joke about that phrase, but that's what that he's 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 beginning to red pill and lead people into our direction, which is something that you know ten years ago this guy was writing books about nine eleven and building seven and the there was no plane that hit the Pentagon. Uh, <laughs> I actually read that book; it was actually pretty good. But <laughs> and Infowars did 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 much goofier stuff than that. You know they did. They did. I mean, they yeah, they're, they're, I, I, the InfoWars transition has been pretty remarkable because I, I remember, uh, you know, watching some of his uh, uh, YouTube videos and reading some of the stuff. And, you know, it, it, it was uh, it's interesting. I, I it was kind of like entertainment. I don't know if you remember the Vigilant Citizen blog. I've not read that in a while, but, you know, it was like interesting arguments and kind of fascinating exegesis. And I, I, I'm a fan of exegesis. It's, you know, interpretation of pop culture that that's cult symbolism, right? It was very intriguing, but you know, you take it with a (laughs) big shaker of salt, you know, you're, you know, it's like, uh, and I, I would never would have imagined that, you know, the Infowars and Paul Joseph Watson would be pro police. They would be non conspiratorial, uh, and more, uh, uh, much more about demographics and InfoWars and so has on. an amazing story today that I haven't seen anywhere else of this 18 year, this 16 year old, 18 year old black kid who beat the five year old white girl on the bus hmm. and the teacher, the, the administrators of the school basically said, Oh, that's normal. That's, that's normal behavior. And I'm reading the comment section and it's like, Holy cow, this is, these are startling yeah. Startling, startlingly racist comments from the Infowars readers. Their their audience has shifted. I mean, it's almost as if uh, the old Alex Jones audience has gone, you know, exclusively to coast to coast. Yeah. And uh, the the new Alex Jones audience is basically the kind that they want to read. I mean, there's a strange nexus. It's drudge. It's it's you know, for lack of, I'll, I'll just say it. I I think Gateway Pundit is doing phenomenal work. Yeah. Jim Hoff. I he's mean, a, he's another one, yeah. Phenomenal. He's, he's another one that's. I I think you could say he's a fellow traveler, and I never would have said that. His uh, work years you ago. Know, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, back in 2014, he started doing the phenomenal work, the tremendous work on the Ferguson situation because it mm-hmm. basically was happening in his backyard there in Metro St. Louis, and. I, at some point, I was like, "Yeah, hey, I bet this guy's gay." Some re- something told me that I, I had this little thing. I was like, "Hey, but he, this guy probably, you know." I, I watched a speech he did or an uh, interview he did, and um, I remember when he came out, and it was, you know, it was, it was, it was just, it's just really cool to watch all these people make these transitions from uh, points of views that they kind of have this light bulb moment that they they think to themselves, wait a second, you know, uh, f- you know I, I think a lot of people in Free Republic are having that. Even Free Republic <laughs> is, is getting kind of cool uh, in terms of the comments and the, and the links that they're allowing to go. I've seen a lot of the stuff from, uh, from my site um, get uh, stay up there and get yeah. significant traffic. And people are like, oh, my God, you read, uh, you read Cursey, too? And then, uh, it's cool. It's, it's, it's great. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why you wanted to have this conversation, uh, I believe, is regarding what just happened with the NFL and Colin Kaepernick. And I believe that as we're speaking, there are people um, 
having conversations with their friends and in emails, fantasy, fantasy football leagues, guys who've known each other all their lives. So like, man, this piece of, this piece of garbage, can you believe this guy, you know, won't stand up for the pledge, uh, for the national anthem. And now he's wearing, you know, police pig socks. And he's, he's, uh, saying that, you know, cops are racist and, you know, they're rogue cops. And do you know what yeah. I, I, the way I've described it, and I, I actually use this term in, um, it, when I when I at this Detroit gathering that I was um, that I, I, I spoke at a, a month ago, uh, which is really great, you know, it was like seventy five people, all all one hundred percent red pilled, uh, most all of them under forty. I mean, it was remarkable. Um, uh, but yeah, I said it's like we're the we're the in station, we're we're the in station, um, we're, we're the we're the final result, <laughs> and you don't what uh, the way I, I put it is like. You never meet someone who is like, oh, I'm an ex-alt-right libertarian. Or uh, I used to be alt right, uh, but now uh, you know I, I'm a liberal, or I'm a, I'm a I used to be alt right, but now I'm a Marco Rubio supporter. You never meet <laughs> to even say this is in a way ridiculous. You never meet those people because basically everyone is an ex libertarian or an ex conservative or even ex leftist, and they're now alt right. Like alt right is the end station. Alt right is the destination. And you, you kind of like, you might not go all the way, but that's the direction you're headed in. And I, I think that I, th- that's what makes it, our movement important. And, and I, I always knew this because this is why this is what kept this knowledge kept me going when we were like not being denounced by presidential candidates or talked about on Fox news. Like, you know, you, you know, you, I've known you, we've probably known each other for almost 10 years now. And, you know, we've, been in the wilderness in this movement where like no one paid attention to us. You know, the same people came to the co- conferences every year. We weren't really making headway and so on. But we, we understood that we were delving in the real dope. Like this yeah. is, this is the stuff that matters. And, you know, it, this, this is not some eccentric society of, you know, flat earthers or, you know, you know, some, some weird hobby or something, you know, th- this was the real stuff. And I, it is, it is very inspiring. And, um, uh, to the fact that everyone seems to be coming in our direction and they might not get all the way. And that's fine. Actually, totally fine. Um, and I, again, I like if Paul Joseph Watson. I mean, I think we should push back a little if Paul Joseph Watson is like, oh yeah, we in the alt right, you know, believe in libertarianism and whatever. Like, we're going to push back on that. But the, just the fact that he's kind of pushing energy in our direction, I think, is unequivocally good. So I am pro alt light. As I, 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 I think I stole that from uh, Fashion Nation, but I think it's a good term. I'm pro alt light. I, I do not. I don't think that we should be puritans about this and start bashing everyone. I've never believed that. Actually, I don't. I don't think you know wild attacks on the manosphere accomplished anything. I don't think that we should be attacking people who are kind of coming our direction. And, um, I, I think it's just, it's clearly happening. Like if you're going to be edgy, you're going to be coming, you're going to be all light. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of armies meeting up in the, in in the night. And, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen when the pitchforks are raised and, uh, you know, and the, um, the village is finally stormed. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I'll I'll tell you the guys that I've, I've become huge fans of are, uh, you know, the Dilbert guy, uh, Scott Adams, his book, um, I can't recommend enough how to fail at almost everything and still win big is a beautiful autobiography. And it's, 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 it's a wonderful tale because you know what he says in this book? That's so fantastic. He basically says, don't have goals, have a system that you, that becomes routine. And that's what we did. You know, we, you know, we could have said, oh, we have a goal of one day being denounced by a presidential candidate or we have a goal of being uh, constantly referred to on Rachel Maddow's program or or having, you know, obscure GOP consultants say that we're in basements watching anime. Uh, Sorry, dude, I don't even know what anime is. And (laughs) I, uh, you know, my basement has uh, really heavy weights in it that I lift on a daily basis that a lot of (laughs) athletes and pro sports can't even do. Um, But, you know. It's fascinating how many people out there who, if they would just start having conversations with their followers, would probably lead more, um, 
more individuals to our way to to form this collective that you know you're right it's an alt right light i thought that was a pretty good article over at uh, american Ren- renaissance that was published yesterday i think it was by ellison lodge um uh-huh. on uh, the importance of the alt right light yeah. and laying that carpet i haven't read that yet but i'll, I'll link to that it's in our, very our good show notes, it's yeah. very good i've heard of and, that guy ellison lodge yeah, yeah. and and, and <laughs> another guy who i think is really important because he's teaching people if you're watching what he's saying he's teaching other individuals how to take the baton from him and create their own brands and use uh social media and the um the various uh Entities, uh, whether it's Periscope, whether it's Facebook Live, YouTube, uh, Mike Cernovich is a guy that you, you should be following. You know, uh, yeah. you should watch his stuff, and you should realize, you know, he might not be as far as I'd want to be. But you know what? I can take the techniques that he's using to build this massive audience and this incredible um, influence. And I can do that too. And that really is all that. that oh, totally. You know, I mean, he Cernovich. Yeah, this is again. I I, I am. I, I think we're both totally on the same page, and I, yeah. I assume that Ellison Lodge agrees as well. Like, th- there is a value to alt light, and there's a value to Cernovich. That that doesn't mean that that we're gonna like push not push back. I mean, I I think it's very important that we define the alt right, and I think actually a very good thing. And I'm not I'm not saying this to be uh, uh, narcissistic or whatever, but the the alt right is. I would say intrinsically tied with me and, and also Jared, Jared seems to get mentioned uh, as much or more as I do in the mainstream media. So I actually think the alt right, even if Paul Joseph Watson wants to like co-opt it for goofy libertarianism, I I think they'll fail because you, you, you know, it's, it's the alt right didn't emerge with Paul Joseph Watson. And then I adopted it. It's the other way around. And so, you know, I don't think they can actually take a take uh, it away. And the other thing about it is that, like Mike Cernovich, is is obviously built up a huge brand, uh, but also there, there are people like Ricky Vaughn who have like come out of nowhere and built up huge brands, and they are you know to the right of you know, Richard Spencer. You know, they make you know. So uh, it's it's not like the the only success stories have been you know all light. There's been t- you know tons of people like Ricky Vaughn who have, who have built up audiences who are you know 100 percent on board. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this is, yeah, I, I'm just as, you know, as everyone can tell, I'm, I'm enthused. Um, maybe it's just, uh, the Trump speech rubbed off of me, um, or, or Hillary's speech rubbed off of me, but I'm definitely enthused. And I was getting a little, uh, I wasn't getting depressed. I was getting a little down with Trump these past month. Uh, it just, there, there was a softening. Uh, I, I still am not, you know, I, I think Mike Pence has been basically a non-entity. I mean, he is not really influenced the campaign at all. Um, but I, you know, I, I was still not happy about that pick. I still am not. So I was, I was kind of you know, going off into a little bit of Trump skepticism, but, uh, I, I'm not anymore. I, I think we're back. And, uh, I, I think Trump, you know, maybe Trump was having moments of self doubt or something. And then he was just like, fuck it. I'm going to double down on, you know, on who I am. More importantly, it's, about uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to use the term riding the tiger, but the the you know Milwaukee happened, and that was such an amazing moment because you know a black cop who's this really just thug, crappy dude who you know who sang a song about who did a rap song about you know starting a riot like Baltimore. He kills one of his friends from from childhood. This even worse you know POS, mm-hmm. and you know what do blacks do? They start attacking white people. I mean, that's such a great moment. And, Dr- mm-hmm. and what Matt Drudge did that Sunday uh, was just so beautiful because he put it in explicitly racial terms on the most important site on the internet yeah. about, you know, whites being attacked by blacks. And when you read the story, it's like, well, why are white people being attacked? And my God, when did Milwaukee become, you know, majority black when it was, geez, 71% and ni- 71% white in 1980. And now it's 37% white. What happened? Wow. And, you know, then you go to what happened with Colin Kaepernick and you're just, you know, sports are such an opiate and, you know, I have no 
problem admitting that I, uh, I, I'm fiercely. Well, let's do this. Oh, let, let's, let, let's, I'm going to, let's take a pause. We'll put a bookmark in it and we'll, we'll jump into football. So, okay. uh, so let's just do this. I'm glad we got some things off our chest about, about Trump and Hillary and the alt-right. Um, but let's, uh, let's put a book, quick bookmark in this and we'll, we'll jump into uh, football. <laughs> 